excited about you being here with us. We just ask that you would pray with us right now. Father, in the name of in Jesus, the name of we Jesus. You, thank you, God, for all that you have done for us. And we ask, Lord God, that you would be with us as we worship your holy and righteous name. Today, Lord God, we just ask, Lord, that you would bless us and keep us focused on you. Lord, we just love you. And we ask that you inhabit the praises of your people. Be with us today. And we just want to give you the full maximum glory. We ask that you tabernacle with us a little while. Just hang out during this worship time. Yes, Lord. And we'll give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you will join in with us, stand on your feet, wave your hands, jump, and shout a praise. That is what we're going to do this morning in the sanctuary. But you do that in your homes. If you would join in with us with the Sisters of Praise, leading us in worship.
road, and we are thankful here at St. Peter's that you're going to come and visit us. I would just like to give you some ideas about what's going on in our church. We are reading through the Bible in two years. We have just read through Judges and Ruth, and we are about to preach on that part of Scripture right now. And if you'd like to read along with us, you can join us and you can, you can download that reading plan on our Facebook page, or you can text me, or you can email me at PastorEddie at BullockChurch.org, or you can get on our website, and you can contact me and we can send that information out to you. I want to thank all of those around the country, including our church family, those friends of Willock who have been donating to our church as we serve in our community. Still, people are being fed. People are they getting help with their life bills. People are hearing the gospel. People are being saved. And I thank you for uh, donating to the work of God's ministry at this branch of Zion. We are so appreciative. One of the ways that you can do that online all over the world is using our online giving platform called Givelify. It's very simple and secure. And if you donate there, we'll receive your gift. But you can also send your gifts in uh, by mail to our 1610 Woolock Road uh, uh, address in St. Peter's, Missouri. Uh, the, the zip code is 63368, 1610 Woolock Road, St. Peter's, Missouri, 63368. Uh, there is a word from the Lord today. Who wants to hear from God today? Woo! I want to hear from God. I want to hear what he has to say. But we're going to first give our proclamation to the word of God. You can stand on your feet wherever you are in your home, wherever you are, if you're in your car, and all of the enemies here will join in with you in the sanctuary. We will stand on our feet. If you would raise your Bible, however you have it, on your e-device, whether you have a text form of it, raise it to the Lord. We're going to give our proclamation to the word of God. We believe this, and this is why we proclaim it. Let's say it together. This is my Bible, God's holy word. It is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. His words will I hide in my heart that I might not sin against God. Do you believe that today? Yes. We believe here at Willow that if you hide God's word in your heart, when you are squeezed by life, it will come out of you in all of the beautiful ways that the nine-flavored fruit of the Spirit allows that word to come out of you. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But you got to put that word down in your heart for it to come out of you. There is a word from the Lord today. I'm going to read for you uh, from Judges chapter 17. I'm reading from the New King James Version of Scripture, chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. And we'll refer back to it as we go through the text today. Pretty dynamic uh, activity going on. You know the Bible reads like a fast-paced novel. You just need to read it. It will be exciting if you get into it and let the Bible get back into you. I'm going to read now, starting at verse 1, chapter 17, the book of Judges. Now there was a man from the mountains of Ephraim, whose name was Michael. And he said to his mother, the 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from you, and on which you put a curse, even saying it is in, in, in my ears, here is the silver with me. I took it. And his mother said, May you be blessed by the Lord, my son. So when he had returned the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I have wholly dedicated the silver from my hand to the Lord for my son to make a carved image and a molded image. Now, therefore, I will return it to you. Verse 4. Thus he returned the silver to his mother. Then his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the silversmith, and he made it into a carved image and a molded image, and they were in the house of Micah. Verse 5, the man, the man Micah had a shrine and made an ephod and household idols, and he consecrated one of his sons, who became his priest. In those days, I'm going to read this again, I'm going to finish. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. The title of our message today is, Without a King, We Do Our Own Thing. 
Without a king, we do our own thing. After reading the book of Joshua in this journey through the Bible, uh, we have dived into the book of Judges, and we've read through Judges now, and, and through Ruth. And so in our reading plan, we just finished Ruth, which is right after Judges. When I think about Judges, a key word comes to mind for Judges, and this word is cycles. Cycles. After conquering the promised land through Joshua, the people of Israel went through a period of 350 years of spiritual decline. And during that time, the people went through deadly cycles of sin. Seven cycles, to be exact. They would go through these cycles, and how do you remember these pattern? This pattern of cycles is uh, by five words that start with the letter S. And I'm going to give those to you and explain them to you. The cycles of sin can be represented by these five words that start with the letter S. The first word is sin. The people would fall into sin. They would fall into sin. And then the next word is servitude. God would send a nation against them. He would send a foreign oppressor to discipline them because of their sin. The third word is, is the, the third word is, I'm sorry, the second word is servitude. Sin is servitude. And the third word is supplication. They would cry out to God. The people would cry out to God. God, save us from these oppressors that would come against us and that would put us into servitude under them. Then the fourth word is salvation. God would raise up a deliverer, a judge. That's why they call them the judges. He would raise up a deliverer called a judge to deliver them from servitude. And then after they were delivered, God had delivered them, they had repented and reconciled, there would be a period of peace. So the fifth word is the word silence. So you can remember these patterns of cycles of sin and judges by these five words, sin, servitude, supplication, salvation, and silence. So today I want to share three things that, that happen when we don't have spiritual leadership in our lives today. Because we have cycles of sin also. And when we are in the cycles of sin, we need to understand that we need to follow our spiritual leadership. And what hinges on our lesson hinges on verse 6 today. Verse 6 is the, is the key verse that I want us to get down in our hearts. In verse 6 it says, in those days, in those days there was no king. No leadership, no king in Israel, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So these three things, I want to share three things that, that we need to be aware of when we are not led by sound spiritual leadership. The first thing is, without the king, we disregard our families. Without a king, we disregard our families. Let me read uh, verses 1 and 2 for you again, for you remember it. Now there was a man from the mountain of Ephraim, whose name was Micah. And he said to his mother, the, the 1,100 shekels of silver that were taken from you and on which you put a curse, even saying it in my ears, here is the silver with me, I took it. So let me give you some context because a text without context is a pretext to what? To nonsense. We know that we need to know what's going on. So the first 16 chapters of Judges Record, as I mentioned before, these cycles of Israel's spiritual decline. These cycles of sin. Sin, servitude, supplication, salvation, and silence. But in chapter 17 and the following chapters of Judges, we see that a different paradigm in, in, in these verses. In the, in the following chapter, 17 and following, it serves to give a view of the lives of the people of Israel before there was a judge. The historians that are reading and studying these texts 
No man in the appendix to Judges, the 17 and following chapters, probably occur sometime after Joshua died. Immediately after Joshua died, before the first Judges came into being. To show us today what a pattern, the pattern of sin that exists in people that don't have sound spiritual leadership. So 17 actually is out of chronological order and actually occurs after Joshua had passed away, before the first judges come into being in chapters 1 through 16. Because, let me tell you something, without the king, we do our own thing. If you're listening, say amen. amen. In the first, first, first two verses, verses 1 and 2, we find the household of Michael. Michael was a Danite. He lived, he was from the tribe of Dan. And he lived in the hill country of Ephraim. And as the chapter opens up, we find that there's some money missing. Y'all had some money missing in your house? And some money was missing. And we find that Micah had gone in his mom's purse and had stolen 1,100 shekels, 1,100 shekels of silver, which comes to about 440 ounces. And at today's rate of exchange, at $18 an ounce, that's about $8,000. He had gone in his mom's purse and stole $8,000. Verse 2. 
So when he had returned the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I have wholly dedicated the silver from my hand to the Lord for myself to make a carved image and a molded image. Now, therefore, I will return it to you. Then he returned the silver to his mother. Then his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the silversmith, and he made it into a carved image and a molded image, and they were in the house of Micah. So this is very interesting. See, we see that Micah's mama recanted, or he took back the curse and asked the Lord to bless her boy, bless Micah, bless his welfare. But this is where it gets a little strange. Say with me, without the king, without the king we do our own thing. We do our own thing. Say it again. Without the king, without the king we do our own thing. We do our own thing. Now this is what happened here. She said that she dedicated the money before it was stolen. She had dedicated it to the Lord. Let that say again. The word for the Lord in the text is Yahweh, it's Jehovah, it's the, the covenant name of the God of Israel. That's my Lord, that's my God. It, it's the it's promise-keeping God. So he, she's dedicated something. She said the money was dedicated to Yahweh. But then she said she dedicated it to the Lord to make a carved image. Now, carved image is an image that's, that's made from wood or stone. And she said, I also dedicated it for a molded image. That's an image that's made of metal of some sort. So she's still trying to worship Yahweh, Jehovah, the one true living God, but she wants to worship God her own way. She doesn't want to worship God the way right. he said worship, but she wants to worship her own way. She wants to make an idol of wood, stone, or metal. And worship them, those idols or statues, as Yahweh. Not the worship of other small g gods, like I talked about last week in Joshua 24. She wants to worship the big g god, but she wants to worship the big g god like she wants to worship God. Uh -oh. Now, now she's not violating. Let's check this out. She's not. She's not violating the first commandment, but but she's focusing now on violating the second commandment. Let me read it for you. Exodus 20, verses 4 through 6. It says, You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that's in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, yeah. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation. There's a lot of have an idol God. To the fourth generation, fourth and, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commands. There's a lot at stake here. Third and fourth generations will be affected by what you do today. Amen. This is probably the most misunderstood of commandment. Let me, let me explain it a little clearer. She led her son to violate the second commandment, which prohibits the worship of an image of the true God or an image of a small G God. It really doesn't matter if it's going for the big G God or the small G God, but in this case, she made an image or was making an image to worship the big G God. And it's, it's worth repeating because God said this over and over again. Just write this down and look into your own studies later. He said this in Leviticus 26 1. He said this again in Deuteronomy 4 16. He said it again in Deuteronomy 5 8. He said it again in Deuteronomy 27 15. And some examples that you may be familiar with that violate the second commandment was when Aaron made that golden calf at the foot of the mountain right. and said, These are your, this is your God. Serve this God, this calf that I made. And then Jeroboam also made two golden calves. Right. In, in 1 Kings 12, 28, Aaron made that calf in Exodus 32, 4. Go check it out for yourself. These were made, these were not images for 
to worship a small G God. These were representations of the big G God. These were representations of Jehovah. See, when you are without a king, you disregard your faith. If you're listening, say amen. 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 I hear you saying, Pastor Al, look, we don't make any idols or graven images today. How does this apply to us? Well, I'm glad you asked that question because it does apply to us. There are three areas that I want you to check out in your life today. As Christians today, not in the Old Testament times, not in the New Testament times, I'm talking about the church age right now, there are idols in your life that you need to check. And if you have idols in your life, according to these three, I want you to get rid of them. Burn them. Do something with them. But get them out of your house, out of your life, and out of your heart. The first area is this area of worship of false images or false concepts of God in our mind. When we have a false concept of God in our mind, it plays out in how we worship and serve Him. See, we need a God nickname sometimes, and we develop a picture from that name that we've given Him, and it, 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 it affects how we serve and worship God. Like the old man upstairs, or the celestial Santa Claus in the sky, All right. or me no brunt that's falling our fun. Each of these are false images, false representations, false concepts of God that when those creep into your worship, it shapes how you serve and how you worship and it, it shapes how your relationship with God, with God, is affecting that, affecting your relationship. So the first is false images are false concepts of God. The second thing is superstition. Superstition. When we put our faith in charms and bracelets and jewelry, we can wear a cross as Christians or a Christian bracelet or a Christian t-shirt and we can think that that can bring us safety and security. We almost trust in these trinkets and this jewelry and these bracelets and these, these things as if they are God themselves. But let me tell you something, this superstition is like breaking the second commandment because they are not your God. That cross that you wear around your neck does not protect you. It is the God of heaven that protects you. You yeah. can't worship those things. Yeah. The first thing is false images or concepts of God. The second thing is superstition. The third thing is more in line with Micah did and his mama did in this Old Testament text. We actually have pictures and statues of Jesus as a baby, Jesus as a man, Jesus on the cross, and we worship them because they give us tangible pictures of our Lord and Savior. Some of us in our churches have shrines in our homes where we have statues of Jesus, statues of Mary, statues of the apostles, and we actually go into that place and have worship. We go there and worship and bow down at the altars of the shrines that we have in our homes. But God tells us not to do that. The problem is not having the pictures themselves. That is not the problem. The problem is when you bow down and worship them. All right. If you're listening, say amen. amen. Teresa and I took a wonderful trip to Paris many years ago. While we were there, we saw some of the most beautiful church buildings in the world. The most ornate buildings. And inside those buildings, there were statues of Jesus and statues of Mary and statues of the apostles. And when I went into that building, I felt no spirit in that place. God was not there. People were just walking around taking pictures. That, there was no worship going on there. God had long since left there. And they were worshiping at the altar of these idols. And I'm going to tell you something. God is not interested in your idol worship. He wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. God has designed how we should worship. And he tells us. And let me tell you something. In light of this COVID-19 scenario, these times that we in, I know at least we here at Blood know that we don't need to come to a building to worship an almighty God. Right. I can worship all by myself. I can worship with my family. 
that all of the people shall say, Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, Judges points to this idea clearly that without spiritual leadership, without someone providing spiritual restraint, idolatry spreads from grandma to son to grandson. And if you keep on reading, the whole tribe of Dad from there was infiltrated by these idolatrous uh, practices. Without a king, we do our own thing. Recently, I just was walking through our house and I heard my girls uh, singing songs through the house and I smiled because I do that. Uh, when we were going to school, we, when we were going to school in the morning, I would take them to school from, and then every morning I would take at least one of them to school and we, we pray all the way to school every day. I, I miss that. I miss that at the end of school. I miss it. Now the school is out and we had to adjourn uh, out of school because of COVID-19 early. I miss that time, but, but when my girls pray, they pray like me and I smile. On Sunday morning, when they were leading worship, and, and when I watched my son worshiping throughout the house and worshiping up in the AV booth, they are very, when they sing, they sing loud. And they sing with energy and passion. And I smile. I smile because they worship like me. What, 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 what we as parents have to do, we have to imprint the image of God on our kids. God has given them the image, but we have to impress upon them the word of God. We have to let them know this is how you worship the Lord. They need to see you worshiping. They need to see you crazy. They need to see the tears roll down your face when things are not going as you would want, but you want to give your heart to God. They need to see you shout a shout of praise. They need to see you shout out loud to know what the worship of God looks like in spirit and in truth. We have to be examples to our kids. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will direct your path. We want to show our kids how to worship. The question is today, I'm going to call the sisters of praise up to close us out today. I'm, not, I'm in my closing time here. So I, I, the question is that about worship is, are you worshiping the true God of the universe? Or are you worshiping your own image of God? No, I, I, I hear you say, oh, 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 Pastor, if, if I'm not doing what I should do, how do I get it right? I'm so glad you asked that question. I'm so glad you asked it because I have something I want you to think about. I want to have something that I want you to incorporate into your life. If, if you want to get it right, if you want to get worship right today, there is a way to get it right. But there's three things that I want you to think about to get this thing right. The first thing is worship God for who he is. Worship God for who he is. Look into the scriptures and understand who he is. If, if you want to worship God, read the Gospels. Because the Gospels speak about Jesus being the image of the invisible God. He is the true image of the invisible God. If you want to worship God, you look and find out what Jesus is like. Colossians 1.15 says of Christ, he is the image of this invisible God. Second thing, if you want to worship God, worship him according to his command. Hebrews 1 3 says, He, talking about Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. If you want to worship God according to how he says worship, you get to know Jesus. You learn about his ways. You learn about his will. You learn about his word. Finally, finally, if you want to worship him in spirit and in truth, worship God through Jesus Christ. His son. Jesus said in John 14, 9, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. When we break the second commandment, you demean the name and person of Christ, who is a true image of God. If we want to worship God in spirit and in truth, we'll obey and worship God as he commanded. We must worship him through his son, Jesus Christ. That the only way to the Father is through Christ himself. We can't even get saved unless we go through the door, the bridge of Christ. Don't worship the man of saves. 
Don't worship the, the grumpy God that's spoiling our fun. Don't worship the cosmic Santa Claus who stops by once or twice a year to give us good gifts. That's not the God of the Bible. Worship him in spirit, but also worship him in truth. My desire is that my kids would live under the king. Would live under the king of kings and the Lord of lords. My desire, my prayer is that my kids and your kids, your grandkids, and one day my grandkids would live under the restraints of scripture and the guidance of the King of Kings, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now, I want to, I want to, I want to challenge you today. Whether you're a member of Willow, or you're visiting a friend of Willow, a friend of mine, or a friend of someone else who's giving you this invitation, I want you to think about three things. Some of us today are living without the King's influence, and it has caused us to disregard our families. You know what I'm talking about. You've done some things that have caused your families great pain. Some of us are living without the king's influence and has caused us to disregard our faith. You know, you grew up doing some things. You, you grew up learning how to serve. You grew up in church or, or you had had experience with God and you know that God has dictated to you how you should live. But right now, you're living your own life with superstition. You're knocking on wood and wearing good luck charms and you've got rabbit's feet in your pocket and all this kind of nonsense and you're believing in all kinds of witchcraft and all kinds of crazy stuff and stuff that doesn't represent what Christians should, should do when they don't disregard their faith, but they, their faith is built on Christ alone. Some of us are living without the king's influence and it has caused us to disregard our future. You have led your kids into a life outside of God's will. Now, we should want to get our families right. Don't you want to get your family right? We, we, we should want to get our faith right. Don't you want to get your faith right today? We should want to get our futures right. Don't you want to get your future right? I would ask you to pray. Right now, I'm going to lead you in a prayer today, a prayer of recommitment, a prayer to say, Lord, I'm tired of living without you as my king. I got saved as a kid. I got saved as a young person. I got saved as a young adult. I got saved recently, but I've been living outside without the leadership of the king of kings and the Lord of lords in my life. I've been coming, on, coming to church on Sunday or, or, or watching church somewhere or, or going to a Bible study or going to a Bible study on Zoom. And that's on Wednesday. But every Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I live like I want to live. I do like I want to live. But today, I'm asking you to recommit your life to living under the leadership of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Many of you, haven't even got to that point yet. You said, look, Pastor, I just was, I'm just a visitor on this call. This is my invite. And I don't even go to church. Didn't grow up in church. Didn't have read the Bible. But what you're talking about, I really need. During this tumultuous time, these unprecedented times of, 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 of unhealthiness, of, of COVID-19, the, the issues of not knowing if you're going to be safe one way or the other in your health, I need some leadership. And then it's crazy, racially biased time where things are happening all over the country and light is being shined on the dust of racism. It was always there, but now we're seeing it more clearly. And you're saying, I need some guidance during these crazy times. I need somebody to, to lead and guide my life. You don't know Jesus, but you want to know. So today I'm going to pray two prayers. One, an invitation to accept Jesus the Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Because you need him. You need sound spiritual leadership. You need somebody that can show you how to navigate this life. But then you also need an eternal home. Because if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you die, you'll go to live with him for all eternity. So let's pray. We're going to pray two prayers. Bow your heads. 
And as a lost person, as a person that doesn't know Jesus, but you want to know him, you want to be saved, you want to be set free, you want to have good sound spiritual leadership, you just repeat that to me. Dear God, I am a sinner. And today, I believe that Jesus died for me. He died on the cross for my sin. Thank you, Lord. And I confess, Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I'm saved. I thank God for you. Praise God for your acceptance if you prayed that prayer. Now to all of those that are in the family of God that want to recommit their lives and live under sound spiritual leadership of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I want to pray this prayer for you today. Dear God, I'm saved. Set free. I know I'm going to heaven, but right now, I'm not living under sound spiritual leadership. I'm saved, but I'm not following your word. I'm not worshiping like I should. I have false images of God in my head and my heart. I'm living superstitiously by, by good luck charms and all kinds of things to, 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 to make my day go well. Dear God, I have a false image of you, carved image of you, a molded image of you in my home. Or I go to a church that has these images of Christ, images of Mary, images of apostles, and I bow down and I worship you there. Lord, forgive me for my sin. The second commandment says that I have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. Today, I'm going to worship the Almighty God. Today, I'm going to change my worship and worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So glad that you have joined in with us today. I'm hopeful, prayerful that something that was said hit your heart. It's one of those things that sometimes we don't even know we're doing. When we have images of God that are not represented by what the Bible says about Him. And I would just ask that you don't take it lightly. The first and second commandments is love God first and love God only. We shouldn't put anything in this place. And it's so easy to let idols creep in. We're going to have a closing song. The sisters of praise are going to lead us in our closing song and I'll come back and give us a prayer to dismiss us. And start us on the rest of our day.